Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna talk more about data modeling best practices. We could call this data modeling part two. Stay tuned. Okay, data modeling best practices. Adam did a video on it a while ago. I did another video not too long ago. Adam talked about reducing data set size. I talked about it, gave you a couple of tips. And I just wanna keep going. We had some great conversation in the, com in the comments for both of those videos. And I just wanna talk about it some more. I hope that's okay. All right, if you haven't watched those videos, you probably should take some time and go watch those videos. They can kinda, it just kinda builds upon each other, all right? And if you wanna just jump into it, jump into it. All right, so let's just get into this. Let's get into this, all right. So the next tip I wanna talk, talk about, and we've kinda beat this every time I do videos when we talk about data modeling, I talk about this, and it just seems people don't pay attention. I don't know. In this video, the first thing is, only choose the columns you need. And you probably go, oh, Patrick, I've heard this a million times. Well, there's a, a reason I'm showing this because some people, when they go into the query editor, there's certain, oh, wait a minute, too much talking. You guys know what I like to do. Let's head to my laptop. All right, in the query editor, I've imported a table and you can see this table that I've imported is fact internet sales. There's lots and lots of columns in this table and I don't really need them all. And what people will tend to do, right? What developers, data modelers that do or data prep, whatever, whatever you want to call them, analysts, they'll do this, right? And say, I don't want these three columns. They'll remove these columns. Once I remove these columns, let's say I want, I need one of those back. What do I need? What, what, what can I do to solve that problem? Well, I can remove it and then remove the two I want, or I can go into the DAX, right? And you know, say I want ship, I only want ship date back. I can just delete it out of the code. But let's be honest, that's not very efficient. And you guys know how I'll roll, right? I'm not lazy, just efficient. So let's get rid of this. Let's remove this. And this is what you should do, right? So you can, should go here on the home menu and you see there's a choose columns option. And let's remove those exact same three columns. I don't want this one, this one, or this one, okay? And then when I do that, I realize, oh, I need one back. Well, fortunately, it's really easy. No code, no remove and add back, right? No repeating the steps. You see where it says remove other columns? There's a little gear right there. I click that gear and I say, I need order date back. And I click okay and bam. So I think, I guess we can say this is not really a best practice, just a more of a tip when you're importing a lot of data and you only want to pull what you need in, use the choose column um, option in the home remit as opposed to removing the, the columns individually. Takes me to the second point is you should, one, one of the best practices that I recommend, and this is, a, this is honestly a preference of mine, and there's probably gonna be a lot of debate in the comments, and I'm okay with that, is you should try to abstract yourself away from the database schema. And so this is really specific to data, the database schema. I know some of you guys use Excel and other data sources, but if, if you're going against a relational data source, instead of importing directly from a table, um, try to get the owner of the database, or if, you, if you're the owner of the database, create a view abstract yourself away from the underlying schema. That way, if something changes, if, a, if something in the table changes, it's more likely that the DBA or whoever, the person that owns the database, the database developer will know that, hey, if I change this table, I need to, I need to check the dependencies uh, for the other objects in the database, like you know, views and store procedures and functions, things like that. And so before they roll that schema change out, they'll update the views and your Power BI model should go unaffected, right? I'm not saying that's a guarantee, but if there's a good governance process in place, this should really help because I've had instances where I've you know, inadvertently changed the schema myself and broke some things. But if I would have had a view instead of, you know, saying, okay, I need, I've changed this schema. Let me go talk to all my Power BI people um, and make them aware that I made this change so they can update their schema. If we just create a list of views and know that those views are for our data models in Power BI, then it's easier, right? They'll recognize that and say, oh, let's update my views and let's try not to affect these data models. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So for example, whenever I, in AdventureWorks, for example, you can see I have these list of views right here that we use when we do our workshops and a lot of these uh, videos that we do. That way, if I wanna add something or change something in the in the underlying database schema, I just mod update my view, keep my view, you know, 
maintain the dependency between the view and the table, make sure they are in sync, and then nothing, my Power BI models should go unaffected. All right, so that's the second thing I wanna talk about. I know that's a lot of talking, but you, you should really consider this. Um, and then so the final thing, which kind of goes right into this, for this video, the final thing I wanna talk about is where do you put your calculated columns, right? You gotta be really careful when you build out these calculated columns. And so should you, do the, should you create the calculated column in DAX? Should you do it in the query editor or should you do it in the database? So to be honest with you, my recommendation is you start in the database. If you are the owner of the database or you have a good governance process or you know the person that owns the database, ask them to transform as much as they possibly can in the database. Like for example, look at this view, right? So I had a request come through, let's pretend, let's pretend I had a request come through where we added, needed to add full name to the data model because we wanted to report off of that. Well, I know you experienced Power BI developers go, Patrick, we can do this in the query editor using column from examples, or we can do this in, in DAX, really easy. You guys are absolutely correct. But there's some implications of using those two and I'll talk about them in a minute, all right? So what I like to do is, because I am the owner of the database or I know the person that owns the database, we'll do this, we'll run this, and then we'll go to Power BI and we'll go to the customer view, the customer query and click refresh. Give it a second and bam, right? There's my full name column, just, just that easy, right? It's there and it's simple and it's added to the database, right? And so there's no additional work, it's just the query on the back end needs to efficiently pull that, that into the data model, right? I mean, into the query editor, all right? But okay, Patrick, I don't have access to the source. I don't have access to this. How can I do it in the query editor? Why shouldn't I do it in the query editor? So let's pretend you don't have access. So I'm gonna run this, update this view, and then I'm gonna come here and refresh my view of the data. It's gonna automatically remove full name and you're going to say, well, so I need to do it here. I need to do it in the query editor. And like I said, so you start in the database. The next step is, do I do it in DAX? Do I do it in the query editor? My recommendation is do it in the query editor. Um, the implication of that is it could slow your refresh down a little bit, um, but, and it, be very careful when you do it because the more steps you add, the slower the refresh can be. But in most cases, this does not cause that much of a problem, okay? I'm not saying you, you won't see a problem, but shouldn't cause too many problems, depending on the complexity of the transformation, okay? Especially if query folding kicks in. All right, so for example, if I wanted to add full name now, it would be really simple. I can go here, I do just like that. Go to my favorite feature, column from examples, from selection, and now just find the most complete item here, and I'm gonna type what I want, the pattern I want. Seth R. Jackson, just like that. And then I'll call this full name, click OK, and bam, right, I've added it. So remember, start in the database if you can, right? Start in the database, let the database do the work. The next step, move up to the query editor, do all the work in the query editor, could slow your refresh down, but you know, that's, if you don't own the source, you got no choice, right? Um, and Power BI is great at this data prep, and it does, if, it does do a really good job of efficiently, you know, doing the query folding and running those queries really fast. So I'm gonna go ahead and click close and apply. So let's say, there are cases where you have to do this in DAX. For example, for example, if the query, if the, the two columns you're trying to combine is across two tables, your only option in the query editor is to merge them into a single table. Well, the, the, the most common option is that you have to merge them into a single table and then build a calculated column. But in a lot of cases, you don't wanna merge your two tables because it's the reason you created a nice star schema. And so you'll have to do it in DAX using like a related function or something like that. For example, let's say for example, I want to create a column on this product table they gave me the product name and then in parentheses, the subcategory name. So I wrote a little DAX. Don't go bananas over the DAX. This is just a demo. And then I'm gonna add a new column, right? So I'll add this new column. I'm gonna paste the code in. And because it's across a different table, I have to use related, the related function to go get that value from another table. And that's why I can't use the query editor. So I have to, I don't have any choice. I don't own the source. I can't use the query editor, so I need to do it in DAX. Now I add the new column. You gotta be really careful with doing this. Teo Lachev, a really good friend of mine, wrote a blog post about this, 
how someone created a calculated column on a really long, a fact table with lots and lots of columns, and it spiked out the CPU doing processing because after Power BI processes the data, it's got to build those calculate, process those calculations, and that can, depending on the complexity of the calculation, can be, be a very CPU intensive process. And so you want to avoid those if you possibly can. Okay, if you do need to add a calculation, try not to put it on the fact table. Put it on one of your dimensions, just like I did here, so you don't avoid. So you can try to avoid that really intense process you know spiking out your cpu especially if you're on dedicated capacity okay the second reason that's the first reason you should try really try to avoid the calculated columns the second reason is it can beat up your memory it just can abuse your memory because when you create that column right it materializes it and it uses additional space in in memory so let me show you what i'm talking about before i added that column i had 14 million bytes on my column sizes right um total size if i refresh this so take a few seconds uh, to refresh, but if I refresh this, you'll see it goes from 14 million bytes to right 15 million. Not substantial, right? Not really substantial, but if we go to the product table, we can see that the product sub is it's not taking a whole bunch a space, you know, but imagine if I have a really long table, right? A table with a lot of columns, how how much space that column can take, especially if the cardinality is really high. If it's a lot of distinct values in it, it can consume a lot of space. And I think Adam talked a little bit about this in the other video. Okay. So choose your columns be judiciously only choose the columns that you need um, try to abstract yourself away from the source and lastly be careful when you create these calculated columns i'm not saying don't create them in dax but if you can avoid creating them in dax if you can avoid doing them in a query editor if you can push them to the source push them to the source okay what do you guys think got any questions comments you know what to do post them in the comments below if this is your first time visiting the guy in the cube channel hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, give me a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.